Hi everyone, my name is Sydney and today we're going to be discussing the last book in the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series, The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. And this book was fucking incredible. Wow. Wow. There is so much to talk about, especially for this book to be the final of this series. So all I can say to those of you who haven't read this book is you really should go, <laughs> you really should go read this series because it is incredible. It's all about Greek mythology and it ties in with demigods who are half human, half god. I cannot recommend this series enough. This has definitely become one of my favorite series of all time. I loved every single book. I loved the story. I loved the characters and Rick Riordan has a way of writing which is just so intriguing. I felt like I was captivated the entire time. I literally could not stop reading. I actually set a goal for myself to finish all the books within this month of October. For those of you who don't believe me because it's probably going to be November when I upload this video. It is the 30th of October now and I literally just finished this book five minutes ago it was oh my god so good in saying all of that i'm gonna go into the spoilery section because there is so much to talk about and i really want to talk about it so for those of you who've read it you know the feels and you're ready to dive into the feels with me and yeah here we go in three two one percy had this moment of blowing up the ship Princess Andromeda and unfortunately blew up his friend in the process Charles. I was really sad that he had sacrificed himself But I thought it was epic the way that Percy obviously being a son of Poseidon is able to control the water around him And he was able to save himself and he used all of his power to bring him to the bottom of the sea as far as he could be away from the explosion. That was such an example of how much power he holds, that he is super strong and intelligent. I really love this book because the entire battle scene was so well delivered in terms of the writing and the action that happened. I felt so on edge the entire time. I thought the scene with Clarice versing the Dracon was incredible. They don't have dragons, they have these Dracon monster things that are kind of like like dragons mixed with a snake. And I thought that it was fucking incredible that Larisse comes in and she defeats it. Being the daughter of Eris, she is so powerful and strong and brave. I really love how she added to this story as well because she as a character has blossomed so, so much. Yet it was really interesting in that moment, we find out that Selena was the spy within the camp. And I thought that was really depressing because her boyfriend, Charles, was blown up within the explosion at the beginning. I also really, really loved loved how Kronos was defeated, how Luke found the strength being torn of being Kronos and himself, that he grabbed that sword and he found his weak spot and got Kronos. But in doing so, he had to sacrifice himself. It was a super heroic act, but it was also just super devastating. For Annabeth being a lifelong friend to have seen it all, he died a hero as well. I really loved how Rachel came back and we found out at the end of this book that she is now the Oracle. I thought that was such an incredible development for her character. And that prophecy at the end, my absolute favorite scene that happened in this book was when we were at the River Styx. Percy went into the the water and the water led him to feel as if he was being burned boiled like the worst pain imaginable yet in doing so and thinking about Annabeth he was able to become invincible that moment where we saw him for the first time after that way the bullets hit him but he just kept running and they just went through him they didn't even affect him because for him to die they'd have to hit that particular spot and he went up to Hades and he was the one who had the sword at his throat like fuck you Hades look at me me now. That was such an epic moment. I also really loved Nico in this book because Nico is the son of Hades, the Lord of the Dead. Nico, you can definitely feel within his character that he is good, but he has this kind of evil flair to him. I really love that he had these cheeky comments of knowing how to shadow travel. That was also such an epic moment with the hellhound, Mrs. O'Leary, of teaching her how to shadow travel and the way he was able to convince his father to help them. I also really loved how Poseidon ended up helping them too, that he was the one who helped the gods defeat the big monster Typhon. For them to unite together and defeat this monster was crazy because 
no one god could defeat Typhon. They all had to unite together in order to do so and they needed Poseidon. I loved that. I thought that Tyson, the Cyclops, I thought his role on the battlefield was awesome too. And of course, I really love the end of this book that we... <laughs> We get a scene of Percy and Annabeth and they kiss and it's so cute and all their friends are like about time which us as readers were like fucking about time. That's the other thing about these books that the romance, if there is a bit of it, it's not overly done. It's not the whole driving plot of the story. It's not cheesy. The end of this book was huge. I love that they were presented in front of all the gods. Percy has been given a gift from the gods that can become a god, he can become immortal, but he declines the offer and instead asks them to swear on the river stacks, which was awesome, I love that little bit, for all gods to claim their children. You could really just feel the sorrow of all these kids who have grown up not knowing who their father or mother was, whether they're even lucky enough to find out. For Percy, ask for this was so beautiful and such a true nature of his heart and what kind of a person he is. I also really love that Athena asked Annabeth if she could redesign the entire city, that she can use her architectural background all the gods, especially Apollo, was like, make sure there's a statue of me somewhere or there or, you know, in two places more than one. I really loved this book because it was such a wave. A lot of the time I feel myself being drawn in and out of stories where I don't feel as related or I don't feel as emotionally invested. But this was a series where the entire way through I felt incredibly invested. I am filled with so much joy that I could cry, but it's like happy tears. I feel like a hero, like I feel strong and brave as if I've done this with them. For that to be my reaction to this story, it speaks so many levels on the writing. A huge thing that happened within this story was obviously in the last book, Daedalus upon his death gave Annabeth his laptop, which had all of his inventions on it. We get to use one of the inventions, which enables the statues within the city to fight on their side, to be reborn in a way as order maidens. I thought that was epic. I really love the goddess Hestia, who is the goddess of the earth. And I thought that was so interesting how she ended up being the last Olympian. Percy gave the Pandora's box to her to protect it so he was never, so he never felt tempted to give up. I really love the amount of courage he had in order to do so. But yeah, I don't really have more to say except I loved this series and I feel both devastated because I finished it, but I feel so full at the same time. For those of you who've read this series, I hope that you loved it as much as I did. So um, I'll see you guys in my next video hopefully super soon. I'm planning to read the book Surfs by Madeline Miller next or maybe a contemporary or <laughs> something light. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in my next one as usual. Bye!